Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks, and today I'm going to be talking about one of the newest Obsidian features that has just come out that has me really excited. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned. So recently, um, I've been kind of absent lately. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff. Bruh! Mainly also just trying to finish my degree program and graduate, hopefully within like two weeks. <laughs> so there's been a couple new features that have come out in Obsidian. Namely, the one I'm talking about today is Obsidian Canvas. This plugin is awesome, and it's also a really friendly and accessible way to do a lot of the things that Excalidraw, that has been around for a long time in Obsidian, um, has kind of taken up a lot of slack in regards to like having diagrams with linking to notes and actually having those links be usable. Uh, the Obsidian Canvas plugin, the core plugin, so it comes right out of the box with every uh, download of Obsidian, is really awesome. It doesn't overcomplicate anything, there's not like death by features, there's not overwhelmingly a lot of stuff you can do with it, but there's enough stuff that you can do with it and enough functionality that really makes it a flexible and really useful way of doing notes via diagramming and organizing things and also still having some really cool capabilities. And we're going to take a look at these things today. So let's get into it. The best ways to support the channel are if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're gonna do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal are just fine. And if you just wanna support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. So diving into Obsidian, what I'm gonna show you is pretty much the gist of what Canvas can do that I've already started using on several different types of notes that I'm taking and I think you're gonna love it. Now, I, already have, I have a lot of pre-populated examples and stuff because frankly, I'm finding it hard to keep a lot of things organized right now in general. So I'm just gonna have these examples already up and then I'm going to explain them and then also like recreate them side by side. So it's not just you like seeing a finished thing, you're gonna see it getting developed, but I'm just gonna clone it in essence. Let's get into it. So this is what I got set up so far. There's a bunch of stuff here, but like what what's going on? So the awesome thing about Canvas is that you can do like almost like a flow chart kind of a thing. So like I can have these different cards and they can like link and flow into each other, but you don't really have any other shapes. It's just like these little card objects. These cards are not notes. They're not other files. They are literally just in the Canvas. They are just nodes and objects in the Canvas and they can hold text and they can even hold links to actual notes without actually existing in uh, a file itself. Forgive the lag on my vault for some reason, but if I hover over this particular link, you know, it'll actually show you something. Like this card that doesn't exist as anything can still show you links to other things. So you could have like a whole uh, dashboard of nodes in a canvas and it could still hold these links to different things. That's totally possible. So you can group links to your different notes in your vault via a canvas instead of having like a text index page. Um, I gotta check if this canvas thing can actually be on publish because if it can, ooh, that would be useful. So I couldn't wait and had to verify it. No, uh, you can't have canvases on Obsidian publish yet. Hopefully that can happen because that would be so much more convenient to use as like a, here are the jumping off points of my vault, or just general link organization and groups in a visual manner that would be much friendlier for like a brain like mine. But alas, that is not something that is currently supported. Anyways, so we have these nodes and they are not files and they can contain text, they can contain files, heck, they can even probably contain, uh, yeah, Probably images too. Uh, let's see if I can actually just put in an image in here if I have one on hand. Um, 
let's see. If I go to my media and I pick rename, copy that, and I put that in there, make it a little bit bigger. Yep, so we can even have images. All kinds of things can go inside of these cards. Uh, text, images, videos, embeddable media, and these are not files yet. These just exist within the canvas only. So this is really useful because it lets you like develop fledgling notes without even having to make files. So in essence, you could have like a diagram board like this and kind of put your seedlings on this board, tie them together and thinking about you know how they interact with each other and how they relate to each other and just develop these ideas before even converting them to a file, uh, if that's your prerogative. So this could actually be a great stand-in for even a Zettelkasten like, processing pipeline. Uh, if you wanted to process your notes through various stages, this is possible. You could also use like the groups feature in Canvas I'll show you, the coloring of the nodes could show you, like an indication of where it is in processing before it becomes a note. Like this could totally replace a lot of the emoji tag system if you prefer to do it this way. Not sure I will, but we shall see. So now that we got our cards, uh, what if we wanted to just add a note to this, you know, this uh, canvas? You can totally do this. So if I go to my vault and I pick uh, a random note, let's just say mm, something, let's pick, yeah, I'll pick median. I can click and drag a file from the file explorer into the canvas and there is the note. Bam, that is the note uh, that I have on median in stats. Uh, that's really handy. You can double click on the note and start entering and you can edit this file from here. So you can edit from within the canvas. If I want to relate something else to that file, I can click and drag and now I have an arrow. What does the arrow do? To my knowledge, nothing other than just visual organization. You can label the arrow. But again, I don't think this does anything. Uh, if we go to the actual uh, median note, um, median, and open that up, I don't see any extra metadata added. If I go to like backlinks, um, if my fault stops lagging. If I go to backlinks, uh, let's see, t -t -t nope, I don't see any linked mentions from the canvas, nothing, nope. So it doesn't add any particular metadata or linkage, but it does let you have some, some level of organization. So you can click and drag files onto the canvas and add them, but we can also convert these existing cards into notes. So I've converted this one, but if we take a brand new card, this is a brand new card. Zoom in for you guys. So there's a brand new card. It does nothing. Now what I can do is I can like right click on this and I can, ah, convert to file. So let's do that. And I'm gonna call this, what am I gonna call this? YouTube test card. So now it has that title and you can see there's the title, there's the content, this is a brand new card. And there we go. So now if I go all the way down to, uh, it's probably in my inbox, YouTube test card, I can open up this file over here now. It's its own independent file that I can now edit and mark up and do whatever I wish with it. I'm gonna open it up over here. And now we have the card open in the canvas and then we have the actual file open. So I'm gonna say, hello world. Oh, wow, it's live. Just kind of like data view, like it's it's live, it's going, it's doing its thing. And thankfully the metadata does not uh, show over here because that would be obnoxious. But the title is not only in the note, but it's also over the card. So you can see that this card actually exists as a note because there's its name. So I can close that, zoom back out, and we can see that I actually have a couple of these that I've made from existing cards. I've added this one, uh, I made a sample thing and I added it here like I did to the median, drag it on, there it is. I've converted a card into a file. So converted card, that's what I just showed you is that now it is, it's a card that's been converted to a file. 
And this is awesome because again, you can process your notes and then convert them to files that actually exist when you're done in your Canvas playground, a sandbox. Now, forgiving for lag, um, I'm over the moon excited for this because not only do you not even have to make them files to have links, but you can turn them into files at will. Let's say you have a lot of similar looking items or you want to group them together like a, a stage of processing or just a topic, a group of a topic. So you can totally do this by these groups. The groups don't do anything other than, again, visual organization inside of the canvas. So if I take these and I can move both of these files over here, and I'm going to say right click on the canvas blank area. One, you can add a, a new card. You can add a note from the vault. You can add media. We'll get there or a web page, we'll get there, but create group. So now you have an untitled group, YouTube testing. Okay, so now here's my group. Now, if you've ever used the Miro application before, the diagramming application Miro, this works a lot like the frames. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. So I am going to take this group here and I'm actually going to drag the, the outline of the group around these two uh, cards here. Now, if I select this group and I, you see the hand is a little, you know, glove looking icon, reminds me of the Disney gloves. I can click on this group now and it now owns everything within its boundaries. Now the arrow doesn't matter because it's just pointing from card to card, but the cards within the group, click on the group, click and drag. Now this group owns these two cards. Now I can take this group and I can right click on it or just left click on it as long as it's selected and you see the set color. Same thing for the cards. I can click on the card, set color, now it's red. Click on the group, set color, now it's yellow. You can do this. Now what we can also do, and I think this is really cool, is that if you have a very large and expansive canvas, you're doing a ton of brainstorming, a ton of thought, analysis, notes, writing, just general getting stuff out of your head and you don't need it to be notes, you just need it out of your head, on the canvas, visually laid out, spread out. You can now see everything. If you start grouping things and making groups or whatever reason you have for groups, this little feature is gonna be amazing for you. I can actually run the command palette, command, and I can say canvas to see the canvas commands, jump to group, which lists all the groups in the current canvas, my group over here, and it will take you to it. I think that's awesome. One for navigation, but say you have an, like a processing pipeline you want to pick up at a particular location, you have a particular topic, you have a giant master canvas with all this stuff on it. This is going to be amazing for you because you can easily jump to that particular location. Love this. Now you saw a couple other features that I want to right click on here, add media, add web page. It's exactly what you think. If you have local media in your vault, so I have downloaded some videos, I have some PDFs that I have laying around, you can add these in from your vault. So add media, I'm gonna say DSM, there it is in my inbox, the same thing, and there's that's how I added that PDF, there it is. And you can do the same thing with the video files that you have, just select the media and there's the file. But what I really like about this is that there were a lot of people who were asking on my uh, video note-taking um, video, video note-taking video, hmm. they were asking, how do I take notes using the like a media extended plugin on video files I have hosted locally? You know, they, they live on your computer, they're not on YouTube, or you've downloaded them from YouTube and they're just on your local machine. How do I take notes using this plugin on those? To my knowledge, you can't do that. Um, if you can, somebody tell me so I can use that because that's cool. But I prefer a lot of the times to download these videos that I really want, like and get a lot of value out of that I don't want disappearing into the ether of time and the internet. I don't want to hunt them down on the internet archive. I just want them. So I'll download them and I'll keep them in my vault or on my giant servers over there. So if I have them, they're local. I can take notes on them, right? Uh, not with Media Extended. Uh, but with Canvas, what you can do is you can actually, I'm going to mute this, you can play these videos inside of Canvas and take notes on them while they play. And I want to pause that, paused, take notes, you know, whatever, take notes. This is incredibly useful, 
And the downside is that it doesn't have the automatic time stamping and linking or anything related to what a media extended does. But for local hosted files, this is pretty useful. It's handy and it can get the job done because then these notes can then be exported or turned into a note from this card. Or you could just have the card made from a template, drag that template or that, that uh, templated note thing where you're going to put your video notes generated from template into uh, drag the file onto here. And now we can take notes on this. So if I had, for instance, um, let's make a new note. Whoops, that is not what I wanted. Obsidian. Let's make a new note and I'm going to call this, um, it's a video, so plus lag, 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 plus uh, linguistic determinism. Okay, and now it has a plus sign, so if I insert my meta template, it will then pick out all the video stuff whatever i'm just going to ignore this little thingy here for now if i can get over the lag if somebody knows why obsidian's been lagging a lot for me lately please let me know because it's just slow whenever i open up anything these days i'm not sure why there okay so delete all that so now i'm ready to take notes that's all i really care about is just this this blank sample thingy so if i go to my uh notes now i can close that and say, okay, there's linguistic determinism. I've generated the place where I wanna put these notes into a file using my templates that now exists, ready for note taking. I can drag this you know, uh, file over, remove that. And now here I am able to now take notes side by side with the video. So this can be playing and I can actually be in here editing, taking notes on the video as it plays. Oh, wait, pause that section. Continue taking notes. Whatever you want to do. This is awesome and a very useful part of the workflow. So then you might ask me, okay, well, I have these notes that already exist and they're embedded in the canvas. I don't want to, how, how do I open the notes? So you could open up the, the command palette, but even easier would just be to, you know, double click on the title of the note. And now it actually, forgiving the lag, opens the note right where the canvas used to be. Now, it does jump to the note, and because we have like, you know, the, I'm not sure if this is pain relief, the plugin pain relief, or if this is just a native thing now, but I can navigate back to the canvas when I'm done, you know, specifically looking at that particular note, but you could always just open it up again with the command palette in a new pane, and there you go. So we saw um, PDFs, we saw videos, you can also embed web pages. Now we already know about uh, iframes and people have come at me all the time talking about like, well, iframes don't, the security risks, blah, blah. I don't really use iframes much at all besides playing YouTube videos or something or other. Like, I'm sure there's some security risk with iframes embedding in whatever, but you know, if you're into it, if you want to use an iframe within Obsidian, uh, you can totally embed a web page. So again, if you have videos or articles or media on the web that you want to embed within the canvas to take notes, you have that option and that possibility now. Have at it. Now that's basically all the functionality of Obsidian Canvas. There is some other stuff, but that, I guess that's basically everything. It's enough to be powerful, useful, and productive, but not so complicated and feature rich that it leaves you scratching your head wondering where do I start and how do I actually leverage this thing? It can do so much. This does enough to really solidify its placement in your tool belt without being so complex that one, it's hard to learn, two, you're not under, you're not sure where features might overlap with other plugins, and if you could just decommission other plugins and just use one thing, like, it doesn't even get into that problem. It just, it works for what it is. Now you might want to get rid of maybe uh, some of the other diagramming plugins you have, maybe not. Like I still see perfectly good and valid use for Excalidraw when you want to do flow charts, not necessarily note taking. Like you want to do like process maps, but then still link to stuff. Excalidraw can still do that. And that's still awesome. But this can serve a great as a great tool for diagramming plus actual note taking and note generation. This is a very useful piece for your tool belt. Now there are a couple other uh, things that you can do. You can click the little help icon over here and it gives you this little menu. So there are some things you can do, you know, undo, redo, um, 
uh, cloning cards. So for me, it's option drag, probably alt drag for Windows. Um, add and remove from selection. Yeah, there's not there's not a whole lot of additional stuff here. Just like you know, hotkeys and stuff while you're in the canvas pane. But that's it. Like that's the functionality, and I think it's useful. I think it's great, and I'm already using it for some of my own notes. Um, I was reading some books on uh, Zen Buddhism and taking some notes in the canvas because you know, there's like a there's a lot of stuff with that stuff. Like there's ten precepts this or two hundred twenty seven precepts that eightfold path this and like there's so many numbered like groupings of different bullet pointed things. But yeah, there's so much to keep track of in Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, and all this other stuff that I just, while I was reading some of the books, I just made a canvas. And so now I'm keeping track of different things related to Zen Buddhism. So I could keep, I could actually jump to um, canvas, jump to group, and I have a bunch of different things here. Now I've obviously done things incorrectly because I have all these different stages listed. Um, or maybe not, because maybe it's looking like uh, some of these are grouped underneath their parents, in which case that would be really useful. So I'm not sure why these, these ones are not organized better. But hey, these are now groups that I can jump to. Four Noble Truths, bam, there we go. And then I can uh, point cards to each other, and whenever I want to actually do something with this, I could actually go to um, a note, and you can take a canvas just like any of your other existing notes and absolutely embed that canvas into that note. So if I wanted to embed the canvas, it doesn't actually show you the, the canvas itself, unlike the Excali draw drawings, but it shows you by, if you click on it, it will then show you the canvas again, allowing for the lag of my vault, it will then show you the canvas and you can just click on that. And then again, using the back button, you can go back to the note. So there's a lot of cool stuff. I'm already using this. I think it's awesome. I think you might find it awesome too. So enjoy. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it and very much appreciate everyone's patience while I've been very overwhelmed and too busy to really be posting very regularly. But uh, let me know your thoughts. What do you think about the Canvas plugin? How are you using it? You know, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on, how you like it. And again, thanks for all of the sponsors, the Patreon supporters, everyone on GitHub sponsors, all of you guys. Thank you so much for continuing to support the channel. There will be more videos to come and I have a lot planned. So with that, I bid you adieu and catch you in the next one.